What would happen if we put pigs, bees and earthworms on a low gravity, high oxygen planet and allowed evolution to run its course over millions of years? What kind of beings could evolution give rise to? That is what we'll explore in the world of Jotunheim. This is a seed world project where the main species is pigs, a highly underrated animal. This is the second video that I made that covers this world. But you do not need to have watched the first video to be able to enjoy this one. I will first provide a summary of this seed world and link to the first video at the end of the video so you can go and see that after. This is a general update type of video and I want to cover three topics. First, I have a question for you. What kind of weird and strange animals do you think could evolve on a world seeded with pigs, bees and earthworms? So all of you, my audience, had some awesome suggestions on my first video. And I'm going to go through the best ones here. Secondly, I've had several artists reach out to me to volunteer their time to help create artwork for Jotunheim. And I think it looks great and I really want to show you. And finally, I want to share some details about this channel that I have not shared before. Let's start by exploring the world of Jotunheim. The events of Jotunheim takes place several millennia in the future where space exploration and colonization are beginning to accelerate. Most habitable worlds discovered are already rich in microbial life and Jotunheim is one of those worlds. A cool, temperate planet with low gravity, high oxygen and two major continents located a few hundred light years from Earth. Human settlers arrived here carrying earth plants, soil organisms like earthworms, trees, fungi, bees and domesticated animals. But within one generation after landing, the human colonists vanished from one day to the next. It is for now unknown how or why, but their disappearance marks the start of a new period on Jotunheim called the Aeosian Age, which lasts roughly 100,000 years. During this period, vegetation spreads across all landmasses of the planet. Jotunheim's low gravity allows trees to grow to colossal sizes, igniting a planetary arms race as forests evolve to reach ever higher to reach the sunlight. After the humans vanished, all domesticated animal species died in their enclosures, except for a small group of pigs that escaped into the wild. With no predators and abundant food, their numbers exploded. But this eventually resulted in overpopulation and a shortage of food, causing a population collapse. To survive, different groups adopted different survival strategies. One lineage shrank dramatically as a response to resource scarcity and lack of predators. Over many generations, this lineage became the Eocean Pygmy Pig. But another lineage turned in a less peaceful direction. One group of pigs began targeting and cannibalizing the weak and the sick. Natural selection strongly favored this hunting behavior, resulting in reproductive isolation. Over the millennia, this lineage evolved to become the blood ball, the first predator on Jotunheim. Meanwhile, the bees brought by settlers quietly spread with the flowering plants and will evolve to become Jotunheim's second major animal lineage. But for now, they remain unchanged. As the ocean age comes to an end, Jotunheim has been transformed and marks the beginning of a new age, the age of the pig. This is where we are at now, and I have the main events in the story of Jotunheim and the wider universe outlined, but not all details are fleshed out yet, and I'm getting very inspired by the comments on the videos. So much so that some of the suggestions have already influenced some of the species I want to create further down the line. I want to go through the best suggestions for what could evolve on Jotunheim. The first suggestion that I really like is orcs. I love fantasy, and I think that under the right conditions, I'm sure that some orc-like creatures could actually evolve, and I'm very likely to use some version of this idea in the future. I want to give a shout out to NPC person one, as they were the first person to suggest this idea. Several other people, which you can see on the screen now, has also suggested this. So thank you very much for that. The second suggestion is Hell pigs. These are scary looking animals that existed 38 to 15 million years ago. They look like some kind of nightmare pig, but they are actually more closely related to hippos. I hadn't actually thought of this and it's a good source of inspiration to me and it can give me some ideas where I can take some of the future pig lineages. 
Therefore, I want to give a shout out to Julian Truscott for coming up with this idea first. The third one I want to cover is Rata Tosca. I want to give a shout out to Critical7401 for suggesting Rata Tosca. In Norse mythology, Rata Tosca is a squirrel that runs up and down the giant world tree called Yggdrasil. And I think this fits very well with the Norse mythology atmosphere that I'm going for on Jotunheim. Jotunheim also has giant trees, and I think these are actually quite interesting habitats for life to adapt to. Because of the lower gravity on Jotunheim, you can imagine that some very interesting ecological systems could evolve in these trees, that are very different from what we know on Earth. I am planning to make tree dwelling life a major part of life in Jotunheim, and I'll cover it more in a later video. Giant Earthworms The last suggestion I will cover is this one, and it's one that I had not thought about. But I think it's absolutely awesome. Giant Omnius Earthworms I had not planned for earthworms to play a big role on Jotunheim, but given the low gravity and high oxygen, this could have a major impact on how earthworms could evolve. I think this concept is just so cool and it's something that I want to expand on. So shout out to Oisinim332 for this idea. But that is not all. In the same common thread, VPG VPG1133 suggested that the earthworms might leave tunnels after them. And because the gravity is lower on Jotunheim, these tunnels wouldn't be as likely to collapse in on themselves. And that made me consider that actually this could be a habitat in and of itself where other creatures could live and adapt to a type of life that is completely different from anything we know on Earth. So yeah, I think this is just a really interesting concept and it's something that I want to expand on. And now I have a question for you. What kind of beings do you think could evolve on Jotunheim? Let me know in the comments. And I just want to say that in general, I'm really impressed with all the awesome feedback that I'm getting from all of you. And with your help and input, I really think that I can make Jotunheim a lot better. So I really encourage you to engage and come up with ideas. And your ideas can directly influence the plans that I have for Jotunheim's life. And I will of course pay credit where it's due. It is a scientific tradition to name an organism after its discoverer. And I want to honor this tradition. So if you make a suggestion of an organism that I end up using in a video, I will name it after you. Moving on. I have always said that I would be happy to support artists in general, and especially ones that do speculative evolution. So related to that, I have some awesome news to share. Several artists have volunteered to help make art for Jotunheim. They're doing it for free, and I'm just incredibly grateful for their support, and I think the art that they made is just really great. So I asked them all to give it a go at drawing the Pygmy Pig and the Blood Ball, which I want to show you. All the sketches that you've been seeing on screen is by Pluxord, and I think that they did a really good job at capturing the changes that are starting to happen with the pig species on Jotunheim. Because of the lower gravity, life in Jotunheim will need less structural components like bone and muscle, and therefore start to adapt by evolving a thinner frame and limbs. And I think Clocksort captured this very well for the pygmy pig. And similar for the blood boar, it's a normal feral pig that is starting to adapt carnivorous traits, such as bigger tusks for attacking prey. Again, I think that Pluxort captured this very well. Check out this really cool Norse feeling pygmy pig and blood ball by the anonymous Canadian artist Stadaconus. And I think the Stadaconus captures the feeling that I'm going for in Jotunheim very well. I also want to give a shout out to Abnormal Iguana and their take on both the pygmy pig and the blood ball, which I am now showing on screen. I have included links to the social media in the description, and I encourage you to go and check them out. If you want to contribute by making some art, please feel free to reach out over email, and I've included that in the description. Finally, I want to tell you something about the channel that I have not shared before. Some people think that this is like a big channel, and there's many people that are working on it. I am one person, and I do everything myself. From making thumbnails, to scripting, to editing, to narrating. And I love making these YouTube videos. I'm very interested in speculative evolution and what alien life can look like. And I want it to be grounded in science as much as possible. And there's some stuff on this out there, but I don't think that there is enough about this topic at all. So that's why I decided to start this channel, to investigate and think about what alien life might look like, and to share it with all of you. I'm also extremely interested in seed worlds as a way to explore the theory of evolution and explore the type of amazing organisms that might evolve. 
and that is why that I decided to create the world of Jotunheim. And down the line, I would like to make more seed worlds in the same universe. And I have given you some hints at some bigger things that are going on in this universe. But I won't say more for now. As I mentioned before, I do everything myself. And I'm earning very little money on making these videos. YouTube pays maybe 3 or 4 dollars for 1000 views. And I have some videos that maybe only get a couple of thousand views in total. So yeah, I'm not exactly getting rich from making these YouTube videos. I haven't earned back what I've invested in equipment like a laptop and a microphone. So that is why I created a Patreon so I can get financial support to help the channel. I do everything by myself, but if I have more funds, I can get help to make my videos and basically be able to make more videos that I just really enjoy making. So if you can support the channel, please consider heading over on Patreon and become a member. I have a link in the description, but I also know that this is like a financially really tough time for many people. So if you can support financially, then, you know, liking my videos, commenting on my videos just makes a huge difference. If you have ideas for Jotunheim or you want to share some artwork, let me know in the comments or send me an email. I really want to have a community where people can give input. I think this can make the Jotunheim universe and what species might exist within it so much better. If you didn't watch the first video, or if you want to rewatch it, you can watch it by clicking here.